In today's video, I wanted to show you how to do a basic newborn assessment. I very conveniently have a five day old volunteer here. This is my daughter, Piper. She's going to be helping us with this exam. I am going to leave her clothes on. A lot of these exams you would do with obviously the baby in just a diaper, but it's the internet. We're not gonna get fiber naked. Oh, she just spit up. One moment. She's nervous. She's a big internet debut, huh baby? So I just wanted to throw that disclaimer in there real quick. She won't be naked. You can look up pictures somewhere else on the internet if you need that. But I will go over reflexes, things that you should be looking for in your newborn exam. And we'll also go over some basic education and anticipatory guidance that you should offer caregivers of your newborn. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner. This is Piper, she's our newest family member. And I make videos just like this on nursing and NP content on Tuesdays and on Saturdays, I have a vlog documenting my life inside and out of work as an FNP. So if that sounds fun, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you. Let's get on with this assessment. All right, so the very first part of the physical assessment of a newborn is to get their weight, their length, and the circumference of their head. So how big their noggin is. And then when you walk into the room, the other thing you're gonna wanna immediately just kind of look for is, oh, it's okay how the baby looks. So you wanna see their color, make sure they don't look jaundiced, which is that yellow color. Make sure that their tone looks okay, they're not super floppy, but at the same time, they're not super tight that they are not absolutely losing their mind and unable to be consoled. And you're gonna to wanna to inspect their skin and see if they have any lesions, if they have any birthmarks, anything going on. Piper, it's hard to see in this light, but she has erythema toxicum neonatorum, which is a very, very common rash in newborns. You can kind of see it a little bit there on her arm. It'll go away between five and 14 days. And she has a few birthmarks. So those are all things you're just gonna to wanna to kind of note and reassure the parents on and make note of them that that way they can be monitored. But the basic idea here is to just get a general overview of the infant. One last thing I would make sure to check while you're doing that assessment is check their umbilical cord. Make sure it doesn't look infected, um, that it's drying out well. I educate the parents at that point too, you know, don't put anything on the umbilical cord, leave the diaper below the umbilical cord, don't give them a bath until they fall, it's fallen off, and don't encourage it to fall off. It will fall off on its own within a week or two. The next thing you can do, which I'm already kind of doing with my finger in her mouth, is you can assess for their palate. So you're gonna to wanna to assess for cleft lip and cleft palate. That you can do by just sticking a gloved finger into their mouth and feeling the roof of their mouth, making sure that's intact. And you can visualize here that she doesn't have a cleft lip. And while you have their finger in their mouth, it's also a good time to assess their suck, swallow, breathe reflex and coordination. So you can just kind of wiggle your pinky around like I'm doing and see, do they have a strong suck? Do they have a weak suck? Does it seem to be somewhat coordinated? You know, are they choking on your finger? Anything like that. You'll want to assess that while your finger's in there. Now I'm going to leave my finger in there just for now because that's going to soothe her while I do the rest of this assessment. This is a good time to look at her ears. You can see hers are a little bit bent from being in utero, but her eyelids look intact. You can see she kind of has a little bit more of that rash over here. This ear looks good. And it's a good time to feel her fontanelles. So the fontanelles are going to be the gaps in the skull and newborns will have an anterior fontanelle. If you can see that's right here and it's an open area and you want that to be flat. If it's depressed, it could indicate dehydration. And then they have one right here in the back. The one in the back is usually much, much smaller and that's gonna close up within the first few weeks of life. Whereas the anterior, the one in the front Fontanelle, that's gonna be open for at least nine months until 18 months. And I usually educate parents, you know, don't press on that. That's a delicate area, but it's also okay. It's not something that they need to be totally afraid of. I know, um, it's, I know it's kind of unnerving because you're like, oh my gosh, that's their brain. And it's a good education point to remind them, if this ever gets really sunken and doesn't feel flat, I'll have them feel it with me. That could mean baby is getting dehydrated. Look at the shape of their head at this point. Make sure it looks pretty symmetrical. Remind parents, offer reassurance, if their head is a little bit in a cone shape, that's just from being in the birth canal and that will shape out. But it's something to monitor and I encourage parents to take pictures of their head from the top down and from the sides. That way, in case their head doesn't really shape, get back into that round shape, we know we can kind of monitor it and they can always go for cranial molding if that's needed later. Next, we will take a peek inside of their mouth. And in the mouth, you're just gonna wanna note any Epstein pearls. Piper actually does have an Epstein pearl, which is a, a really white small cyst. You don't have to do anything about them. It's in the back of her mouth. And that's again, just offer parents reassurance. Check her lips and make sure that they can flange out okay. She might not cooperate with us. <laughs> there we go. And then you wanna make sure that her tongue also, when she sticks her tongue out, 
you can kind of play with their mouth a little bit and see if she'll do it. You want her their tongue, you want to be able to, if you can, visualize their tongue coming at least past their lip line, and that's going to help ensure that they're going to have an effective suck swallow. And usually you do that by just playing with her lip. I'm not going to do it because if she's sleeping for this video, that's actually perfect. Now, the one other assessment I did not do on this girl's noggin was the red light reflex, and I'm probably not going to do it because I don't want to wake her up. But what you would do for the red light reflex is that's to assess, you want to assess their eyes, which we really didn't talk about. You want to make sure that their eye does not look yellowed because again, that could indicate jaundice. You want that to be pretty white and you want to make sure that the red reflex is present. So you do that by using your ophthalmoscope going in, holding it at a little bit of an angle and just shining the light on the back of the eyeball back and forth. You want to see a red circle of light in their eye on both sides and that would indicate a red reflex. If they do not have it, that could indicate some kind of a corneal problem or retinoblastoma, which is the huge thing you do not want them to have. So if they do not have the red reflex present, that is an emergency referral. One thing I do wanna point out before we go any further is I, as a parent and as a provider, really prefer to educate parents about what I'm looking for as I'm looking for it. Um, I think as a parent, it's very reassuring. It's weird when someone's just touching your kid all over and you're like, what are you even looking for? So I usually talk through my assessment kind of like I'm doing with you and say what I'm seeing. You know, I'm seeing the rash we talked about earlier. I let them know that it'll go away. The milia, the little white spots, you know, those will, that's just trapped keratin or skin cells under the skin. Don't pick at them. It's a really great opportunity to let reassure parents that everything you're seeing is normal. Let them kind of get to know their baby and then make them feel included in the process because I've had assessments before where someone was just looking my daughter over and it was just really uncomfortable because I was like I don't know if this is good or bad or what you're looking for and especially for parents who aren't in the healthcare field that would be especially worrying so just a little side note there all right next we're going to take a peek at their chest just make sure that their chest cavity looks okay again that it's symmetrical we're going to take a quick listen to their heart and there you're checking for the rhythm, making sure there's no murmurs, listening to their lungs a little bit, their belly. Remember to listen to their belly before you feel it. And then we can roll her over and get a better listen to those back lungs. And if you're using a regular adult size stethoscope, just flip it over so that you're on the bell rather than the diaphragm because that's going to be a little bit too big. Next, if you haven't looked at their umbilical cord yet, you can do that now. Just feel their belly. You don't want it to be hard. You want it to be nice and soft. Next, we would move down to the diaper area and just pull their diaper down. If it's a little boy, make sure both of the testes are descended. And on both little girls and boys, you're just going to want to assess the general area and make sure that there's no obvious abnormalities present. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to assess for any his, hip dysplasia in the newborn. So the first test, we're going to do two tests to do this, the Barlow and the Ortolani test. So the first test you're going to want to do is the Barlow. In that, you just start with their legs out, and you're going to bring them in the middle and push down, bringing them to center. Let's let her relax. Applying a little bit of downward pressure and like to the middle. If it was positive, you'd hear a pop. And for the Ortolani, you start with their legs together in the middle, bent 90 degrees, and you kind of pull towards you and out to the sides. And again, if it was positive, when you moved them out, that would kind of create another pop. And if that was positive, you would send the infant for an ultrasound of their hips to see if they are having any hip dysplasia. And the next thing we're gonna do before we move on to the reflexes with Babe is just make sure that their extremities have aren't floppy, but they also don't have too much tone and tone is what would be if they were really really tense so with her you can see you know you can pull her limbs out and she'll bring them back and you're able to stretch everything out and again she just curls up and that's the type of tone you would like in the newborn and then obviously just do a once over and make sure we have 10 adorable fingers and 10 adorable toes one other thing i do mention to parents a lot that can be concerning is the hands and the feet in a newborn it's not abnormal for them to get a little bit of this like purplish hue you can see here especially if they are chilly or if they've been crying as long as the color does return and the baby doesn't seem to be in distress that is okay and i just remind parents of that because that can be kind of distressing if you look at your baby baby's feet and they look a little bit bluish purple but as long as the color returns once they're all toasty and there doesn't seem to be any other obvious problem then that's totally fine okay so the last thing I wanted to talk about here which are kind of fun are the reflexes that your newborn will have so there are five primitive reflexes and we assess these because if their baby is lacking them it could be a problem with the central nervous system so the first is the rooting reflex and that's if I stroke the corner of her mouth you see over here 
she turns her head to where I'm stroking. And this reflex will last until she's about four months old. The next one is the suck reflex. The sucking reflex is just, if you stick something inside baby's mouth, she's going to want to suck it. The next reflex we're gonna look at is the tonic reflex. This one doesn't work like all, all the time, but this is if you turn their head, baby should stick this arm out like she's doing and turn that one here. It's kind of hard to see. We'll do it on this side. Oh, oh everything is okay. Everything is okay. Like I said, that one doesn't always work, but this one will usually go out and this one goes up, but she's hungry, so it's not working. Sorry, friends. And that neck reflex should last until about five to seven months. Next is the grasp reflex, and that is when you put your hands, oh, it's okay, in baby's hands, she should grab them, just like she's doing. So that's when you feel like babies are holding your hands. That's their grasp reflex. Next is kind of fun. This is the stepping reflex. If you hold a baby up and put their feet touching solid ground, they're going to walk for you. Good job. <laughs> and she's doing that on her own. So bring them up and down, up and down. It kind of looks like dancing. And then the very last one, which I guess we can do because she's kind of mad, is the moral reflex, where if you put them backwards really quick or startle them to a loud noise, they're gonna flail out all of their limbs. So we'll see if we can get her to do it. Nope. So she's obviously not in a very startling mood right now, and she's starting to get kind of cranky, but you can always ask the parents, have you ever noticed her splay her arms out really quick? And they'll usually be able to tell you yes, or no, and that's a good way to assess that one. One that is not a primitive reflex, but that's just fun, is the Babinski. So if you stroke their feet, their toes are gonna do that. <laughs> this in newborns is totally normal. If it's in adults, it's actually a really big problem and indicative that there is something not good going on with your poor brain. One other last fun reflex you can do, and this is a good time to examine baby's back as well, is put them over your arm like this and stroke the side and they're gonna curve to that side. There we go, and the other one. And she'll wiggle her booty back to this side and then over here. And that's all of our reflexes. Thanks, girlfriend. You did a great job. What a good job. She's like, I am hungry, leave me alone. Oh, you look happy there. You look happy. And that pretty much wraps up the physical exam of your newborn. The other huge part of a newborn visit and assessment is the education you can provide to the parents. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy in depth on this, but things you definitely want to cover is just to assess how the parents are coping and assess for safety. So the big thing here is you're gonna ask them if they have any questions, especially first time parents are going to have a lot of questions. You're gonna to wanna to spend time answering them, educating them on anything they need education on giving them any resources and tools that could be helpful for them. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the baby has access to a safe environment and food. So making sure that the parents have formula, if they're formula feeding, if mom has any questions about breastfeeding, offering lactation consultant resources, if that's something that's needed. Go over how many wet and poopy diapers baby should be having, what they should be concerned for, you know, so if baby's super duper tired, won't wake up, doesn't wanna eat, drink, has a fever, and then assess for general safety things. You know, is your, do you have water? Do you have electricity? Are there firearms in the home? Is there, does anyone smoke in the home? Assess for all of those things real quick or have it on your questionnaire when they come in. Another thing that's good to do in an initial newborn visit is just make sure um, that mom is aware of signs and symptoms of postpartum depression. It like it would not be setting in at this point, but mom's probably not gonna be seen if she had a vaginal delivery for six weeks. So it's good to just kind of touch on that here, just so it's something that's maybe in the back of their minds in case mom is not feeling so good in the next few weeks. In order to keep track of feedings and poopy diapers, I usually recommend an app called Baby Tracker. It is free on your smartphone. It keeps track of everything. That's an awesome resource to help keep track of all the ins and outs in the early days. And the last big thing I usually touch on is car seat safety. So my background is in pediatric nursing and we saw lots and lots of car accidents where babies were injured due to incorrect placed car seats. So this is like my personal mission in life. So I usually have the parent, you know, I will show them a picture of what proper car seat and clip placement looks like. Go over that baby definitely needs to be rear facing. Do not leave baby in the car seat. If it's not in the car, take them out as soon as you get home because of the recline, they can suffocate. And then go over safe sleep. So on a flat surface, nothing in the crib or the bassinet with baby and dressing them in one more layer than you're wearing because they obviously don't want any blankets in the crib. 
And those are my main teaching points with parents. Like I said, that is not an all encompassing thing. And for second time parents, you can kind of touch on some things more, sometimes less. I highly recommend if you're going to be seeing pediatric patients for an assessment to get the Bright Futures Pocket Guide. I'll leave it linked down below. They go over all the anticipatory guidance you need to do. They go over the physical exams you need to do for children from birth until they are no, until they're 18. So I'll highly recommend that. And that'll have all the anticipatory guidance that you can kind of cover and you can insert that into your appointment however you feel you need to. But those are the big kind of talking points I definitely like to hit on in my appointments with newborns. Okay guys, and that is your basic newborn assessment. Like I said, it's not the most like in-depth detailed thing in case you found something that you were nervous about, but it's a good baseline and should give you a good idea of kind of what you're looking for at that first appointment at a few days of life. Special thanks to our baby model. You did a great job. Good job, honey. Again, if this video was helpful and you'd like to see more like it, consider subscribing. Also head over to Instagram where I post lots of pictures of this one and her sister, what I'm learning at work, what I'm seeing at work, Q and A's, all that good stuff. Question of the day is what is your favorite baby reflex? I personally, I like the Moro one, guys. It makes me laugh. It's really mean, obviously, to do it to them, but it makes me giggle with their little arms flapping all out. So let me know what yours is down below. Hope you have a fabulous rest of your week, and I'll see you again next time. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye. She's like, I'm hungry. Let's go. <laughs>